This is going to be a video on how to almost completely take apart a Ruger Mark II pistol. Uh, we'll be taking this gun apart as far as we can get with uh, an eighth inch flathead screwdriver, a 16 inch flathead screwdriver, and a push pin. Um, a few of the parts are, uh, are, are fitted with a, a, a press fit pins or interference fit, uh, things like that. Uh, we're not going to be getting into that. Uh, front sight, uh, magazine catch, uh, the sear pin, uh, and the uh, components inside the mainspring housing. Um, everything else we're going to be, going to be taking apart. Um, uh, this piece of tape over here is just to hide the serial number. There's nothing special about that. Uh, and the, um, uh, the one thing uh, that I just wanted to stress uh, very, very much is that if you're going to be getting into this, um, you, you have to be very careful because there are uh, a number of very small uh, parts uh, springs uh, in particular that if uh, disassembled in the wrong way the springs will uh, shoot out someplace and it'll be very very difficult to find. Also there are a few parts uh, that are only slightly different from other parts and uh, I'll point those out when we get down into that uh, so you want to make sure you keep uh, the parts separated and you know where uh, which parts came from which part of the gun. So, so to get started uh, first thing we want to do is make sure this gun is unloaded, nothing in the chamber, and there's no magazine there, so the gun is um, uh, totally unloaded. We need to uh, relieve the um, pressure on the mainspring in this mainspring housing, so the way we do that we want to drop the hammer, so we point the gun in a safe direction, pull the trigger, and now the hammer has been moved forward and relieves that which leaves the uh, uh, pressure on that mainspring inside this housing here. So the first thing we want to do is pull this lever back uh, and that will unlock the bottom of the mainspring housing. We can rotate it up and, and pull it out. So, so what I did was I pulled this lever out. It unlocked the bottom of the mainspring housing from the um, frame of the gun. And we rotate this up and we'll just pull this down, straight down, and it pulls uh, this uh, slide stop pin, I believe it's called, out of the frame and the back of the receiver of the gun. So we pull that out, uh, and um, so we move that to the side. This is the main spring housing. Right there is a little cup, that underneath that is a spring that goes the length of this unit. Uh, everything's held together with this pin uh, which this this little locking lever rotates around. Um, there's no need to take that apart. Uh, it doesn't tend to get dirty. This gun, it's very dirty as anybody who owns one knows. This tends to stay pretty clean, so there's generally no need to take that apart unless you really need to for some unusual reason. Okay, the first thing we want to do is get this bolt, pull this out of the back of the gun. However, um, right now the hammer has been moved forward because we relieved the um, we need to relieve the pressure on that mainspring. You can see the hammer through here. Um, the hammer's right up back there, has that little slot in it. You can see this bar coming out of the back of it. And if we were going to try to move this bolt out, you'll see this, the hammer moves back, pushes that bar right into this pin right here. Uh, that pin is um, um, the spring for the sear. Uh, uh, rests upon that pin. I, uh, I'm not sure what else it does, but it's uh, uh, if if we try to point the gun down, pull the bolt bolt out, it's not going to come out because that hammer bar gets in the, uh, jams up against it. So what we do is let's uh, move that ha hammer forward again. I'm going to point the gun, hold the bolt in, point the gun kind of almost vertically, and if you do, um, the bolt will just slide out because you push the hammer back and the um, bar, you can't really see it, but it, it hangs free and it's not going to hang up on that pin. So, so now we have our bolt assembly and we'll get into that in a minute. Okay, so now we have the frame of the gun and the barrel and receiver assembly. So we want to get the barrel receiver assembly off of the frame. So right now uh, it was held on uh, to the back with this um, um, we, we freed up the back of it because we pulled out the uh, the bolt stop pin, I believe it's called. 
the front is a notch that comes off the frame and hooks forward. So right now there's a hook basically on the front of this frame that hooks into the bottom of that receiver. So we're going to pull the barrel forward, barrel receiver assembly forward. It might be a little it's a tight fit. So you just don't want to. So, and I like to just try to hold everything together so it doesn't, you know, pull apart and start scraping and scratching the gun. So we got this barrel receiver assembly disconnected, so we lay that aside. Not really going to be doing much with that. Now we have the frame of the gun freed up from the barrel receiver assembly. So we'll put this aside. First thing I typically do is get into the bolt assembly. So in the bolt assembly we have the recoil spring right here. We have the firing pin which is directly underneath the recoil spring. And then we have this extractor right here. The extractor and is a little spring with a with a um, a pin that uh, bears it down against that extractor and gives it its springiness. So and you have to do this in a particular order. The first thing you need to do is uh, pull this um, recoil spring out. It's not a tight fit at all. It just rests in there. You just pull it out, and it comes out with the spring, the rod, this little retainer up here, and this little bracket down there. So. Um, uh, we take that out and rest and put it aside. Now over here you're going to see the firing pin. And um, the reason why the firing pin doesn't just flop out is because this pin over here, which goes through the whole bolt, goes through the firing pin and retains it. And actually not only prevents it from coming out, but it pre pre prevents it from extending too far. And just as an aside, the reason why Ruger you know, many rim fires, most rim fires, you're not really supposed to dry fire. But the reason why Ruger says you can dry fire this gun is because that pin right here prevents over travel on that firing pin. See if we can get a good. Can't really see it too well. You could have a screwdriver across the front of the bolt. The front of the bolt that rests against against the um, um, the chamber, where where the uh, the machined uh, outside of the chamber. See the firing pin at its extend as far as it goes forward doesn't go doesn't touch doesn't go as far as the face of the bolt. So that bolt's never the firing pin's never going to contact the edge of that chamber and start creating a dent uh, and, or a nick or something, which is what a lot of uh, rimfire guns do. So that's just an aside. Um, so basically, what you want to do um, it might not look like this in the video, but I am holding the bolt flat. Uh, you want to do that as you push this pin out because you don't want the firing pin to fall out as you're pushing the um, this retain, retaining pin out. So I use, I use the end of the recoil spring. Um, the, it's a very loose fit pin. It's really almost no friction holding it in at all. I'm just going to put my finger on top of the firing pin here. Pull that bolt out, uh, the pin out. Right now the um, firing pin is just laying in there. And um, you really don't want to play around with it too much because if you put a little force on it, you might slip and the, the firing pin just might fall out and there's a little, tiny little spring in there that you don't want to lose. So what you could do, just flip it upside down like this. This is pretty much it. So you get this firing pin and you get the spring right underneath it, just like that. The bare end of the spring bears down on this notch the front end of the spring, which attaches to that bent piece of metal. That bent piece of metal, a little hooked part in the front, um, you know, goes right into the front of that bolt, almost to the front of that bolt, right in the front of that slot that everything rides in. So just keep that in mind as you're putting it together. Um, generally speaking, the firing pin spring and that metal part stay together. If they do come apart, though, just notice that See if we can get you a good shot of that. The tapered end of the spring is not the part that goes onto the metal piece. The tapered end of the spring stays bare, and that's what uh, bears down against the firing pin. So, I'll put that aside. Okay, so now we have our recoil spring off, firing pins off. The last thing that we need to do, and this is kind of a little bit of a pain in the neck, is that we, if we want to get this extractor out. So, what's holding this extractor in is um, what holds this extractor in 
is a spring-loaded pin right here. You see right here, spring-loaded pin bears down against this extractor hook. And the extractor, or this black piece of metal that makes up the extractor, has a little hook on the back that hooks into the body of the, uh, of the bolt. So what you really want to do is you have to pull this pin back. And this is what I use this push pin for. And um, so you want to, it just seems like you can rotate it a little bit and you, you can expose this notch that's in the pin. And once you get that notch exposed, you can actually get a good grab on it. And you pull it back. Let's see if you can see that. And that, once you get this pin all the way back, then the, you can try to work this extractor hook out. And I'm going to try to do this, keep it on the camera. It's going to drop out, but that's okay. See if we can just knock that out. Here we go. Now you want to keep your finger on the front there because there's a lot of t pressure on the spring. If it, you let it go too fast, it'll fly out, and it's a very small part and a small spring, so you don't want to lose that. So let's bump that forward. At this point, everything the bolt's totally bare right now, totally free of any any parts whatsoever. We have this um, extractor spring and this pin, whatever you call it, is the part that actually bears down against the extractor hook. And here's the actual extractor hook. So what we did was, there's the extractor right there. This bore down like this. Once we pulled this pin back, this piece was able to unhook out of the thing and come out. This is going to be one of the pieces, we'll show you later, that uh, there's something almost identical to this spring and to this piece in the trigger assembly, and it's almost the same size. Very difficult to tell apart, so we'll point that out later. So now at this point we have our bolt assemblies totally disassembled. Uh, so we're going to get into the frame of the gun. What I like to do first, and I recommend this, is um, is to take the right grip off first uh, because the right grip doesn't really hold anything in or hold anything together. The left grip does this pin right here. You see this round head. That's the pin that holds the, um, it's basically the pivot for the hammer um, and the safety. Um, and the, it's a pivot for the slide or the bolt stop um, lever right here. So um, the, the, the pin does a tendency, no, it's not gonna, doesn't have a tendency to fall out, but all else being the same, you might as well just remove the right grip first because there's no risk in doing that. Okay, so now we have both of our, our grips uh, removed and you can see that this uh, pin, uh, it's, not, it's not liable to fall out, but uh, you just wanna be careful of it. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we want to uh, remove this assembly, this hammer assembly, along with this, the trigger bar, safety lever, and this uh, uh, bolt stop lever. So the first thing we're going to do is we have to keep in mind that we have a number of small parts here. The, the, the smallest of everything is going to be at the back of this um, safety lever right here. You see that little detent right here? It's a spring-loaded, um, not a ball, but it's almost like a ball with a little pin in the back of it. it inserts into the um, the grip area of this safety lever. Um, it's a very small spring, very very small detent uh, uh, plunger right here, and it's it's very very easy to lose. So we got to keep an eye on that, uh, and we also want to make sure that if the if uh, we don't take this apart correctly and we allow the trigger bar to spring up due to you know tension from this trigger spring right here it's not as likely but if the trigger bar flips up too fast this spring might fly out and we might lose that too so we have to be careful of that so what i like to do is to put the frame down and then to just put my hand in front of everything to prevent the trigger bar from flying out and to prevent this, um, you know, if anything was going to fly out here for the safety uh, lever. So just grab, um, just grab that. Let's see if I can show you. Start to work that pin up. And just, nothing's really holding it in too much. 
you do have some pressure on there from the sear pushing down and a little bit from the trigger uh, so just try to work it out okay I just pulled the pin out okay just leave that like that the thing I am going to show you is uh, the pin this pin is totally there's no grooves or anything it's going to be similar to the trigger pivot pin over here, but we'll see that there is a groove on that, so it's easy to tell these apart, but this is the one with no groove. Okay, so see our safety handle is already trying to come out there, so we have to be very careful of that. Let's get pull this slide uh, bolt stop lever out. Let's try to hold that safety handle in there, uh, safety uh, lever, and let's pull up on the... Uh, I'll have to lift this up. I, I don't like to do this because I don't want anything to fly out, make it more liable to fly out. But let's lift up the trigger bar like this. You see the hammer. We lift up the hammer. Well, I make the hammer and the hammer bushing came apart. So we get the hammer and the hammer bushing. Usually they stay together, but they came apart right there. So we have our trigger. And before I do anything, I want to put my finger in here. I really want to hold this safety lever in place because that as soon as that comes out this little spring in the ball is going to go flying we don't want to do that so hold this in here like this and I'm going to lift that trigger bar up and I want to dump out my trigger spring and little plunger that's in there so that's the trigger spring and the plunger we'll set those aside Okay, so now we have a trigger bar and the trigger assemblies right here. Nothing's really ready to fall out of that, so we don't have to worry about that for now. And we have this safety lever. So what I like to do is I like to rotate this up. I like to keep it low in case I do drop it. You know, it's close to the, my work surface here, so um, hopefully it won't be as easy to lose anything. So I lift it up vertical and slide it out here. And here is our show you how small this is. That's the little plunger. That's the thing that rides against the inside of the frame there. Put that aside. And we have our little spring. You, you might as well take it out because it's going to... It might come out by itself. And you'd rather have it take, come out by, you know, where you know it is. Uh, where you took it out where you're going to stick it. So this is the spring. Very small. Put that with that this buddy over there. Okay, so now we're doing pretty well. Uh, we have hammer assemblies taken, totally taken apart. Here's that sear we were talking about. That's the pin right there. It was hidden by the, the grips on both sides. Um, the sear and the spring. It's pretty much right there. Unless there's a reason to take it apart, it's a friction fit. Um, you could push it apart. It's really not that much force to get that out, but, you know, why take it out, put it back together, take it out, put it back together, if get that wear on that friction fitting if there's no need to so I'm not going to be doing it uh, to take the trigger assembly apart uh, all we really need to do is push this pin out here Did you see that's the smaller part that's the mushroom head over here so it comes out from this side we pull it out from this side um, what keeps it in from sliding out is this spring right there it's like this bar it starts out down here See if you can see that, and it goes up along the side here. It looks like a curved paper clip wire, um, and it plugs it kind of plugs right into there. That rides in a groove on the pin, and it holds the trigger pivot pin in. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take this small screwdriver, I'm going to push down on this that's that spring. Push down. You can you can feel a little spring in this. Push down with my fingernail over here. I can push that pin out just to get it started. All right, so I got it started. It doesn't look like much, but it's enough to get that spring out of the groove. So now I got, see that trigger pin starting to come out. So we just stick your finger here just to prevent anything from flying out. It's really not, not going to be too bad, but give it a little bit of upward pull on that, that pivot pin. You don't have to worry about the trigger because there's really no springs in it anymore. But the slide stop that this thing is, there is a, a a pin and a spring in there. So you really, 
you want to keep your, your thumb over here just to prevent anything from flying out. And you can see as you're pulling the pin out, you can feel things starting to kind of start to come apart. Pull it out a little bit. And at this point, you'd be very careful. You got the slide or the bolt stop. You can free up right here. It's the bolt stop. Set that aside. And now you got the the spring for the bolt stop right in there. It's the spring and this pin. So why don't you see if we can just there we go. Okay, so we'll finish doing that in a second. I just wanted to point out this. This is the spring and the pin for the trigger. Uh, I'm sorry, for the slides, the bolt stop. It looks very similar to the parts that we have for the extractor. The spring is very similar and the pin extends from it and very similar. Um, the spring for the extractor is actually a little bit longer. That's how you can tell them apart. And the pin for the extractor is a little bit shorter. So the overall length of the whole assembly is almost similar. But you can just see how they're different. So make sure you, these are the parts that are very easy to get confused. So keep the extractor up there. This is the bolt stop pin. We'll keep this with the bolt stop. Okay, so now still got our trigger hanging out in there. Let's, there's really nothing spring loaded at this point anymore, at least nothing that's going to fly apart. So let's just pull the rest of this pin out and inch that out. And notice that this bolt, uh, this pin is similar to our hammer pivot pin. We have this little groove on it though, and that's what that spring rides in. So that's not too easy to get mixed up. And at this point, we just take our trigger and trigger bar out and they just slide together like this as a pin you know took the spring out so there's never really nothing spring anymore so in danger of anything flying apart there so yeah at this point we have uh, unless you need to take that spring out this little spring bar that kind of keeps that trigger pivot pin in yeah i just leave it in there unless there's some reason to take it out you really don't need to the only moving parts left are the sear like we spoke about a moment ago and we have this magazine catch at the bottom here. Not too much gunpowder and residue gets, you know, down there. So there's typically no reason to take that apart. Just make sure it's oiled and lightly oiled and, and then you're good to go. Um, that's pretty much it. No more moving parts on this that we're going to remove. Um, and that's it. And I think I'll make the reassembly, um, the assembly video, a uh, separate video. So thanks for watching.